Denise Gwen, reading aloud for you from my novel, His Christmas Eve Proposal, Book Three of The Medicine Women of Alaska, Chapter 14. He followed her into the washroom and they both changed back into their street clothes. I wonder if Paul's back down from the mountain yet. I'm ready to head home. He glanced over at her. You ready to head home? Yes, she said and sighed. Our dinner date will have to be rescheduled. Wait, oh heck, that's right, he chuckled. But I did get you fed at least a little bit before my brother ran into the house and ruined it all for us. He didn't ruin anything, she said with a soft smile. The patient always comes first. That's right, he said, the patient always comes first. Paul walked in through the door. I took care of those three surveyors. That's great, Drew said. You ready to head home? I'd love to head home, Paul said. The medevac took the patient a few minutes ago. All the surgical items we used are in a garbage bag so I can sterilize them at the office. We're ready if you are, Drew said. Naomi stepped forward. Paul, do you mind dropping me off at my place? Drew tried not to show his surprise. He'd been hoping to pick up the date from where they left things off. Of course I can, Paul said. Come on and get into the truck. Naomi appeared to be inordinately subdued as Paul drove the truck back down the mountain. He chattered away about the patient with the broken leg and the binding of his wounds and what ailments the three surveyors were suffering from and how he'd fix them up. He sounded happy. Drew looked out the side window, lost in thought. When he'd picked Naomi up earlier that evening, he'd been looking forward to his time alone with her. In that respect, the evening had gone well. As far as any romance, though, well, that'd been a bust. He'd loved every moment spent with this amazing lady, even if his time with her came during an emergency surgery and yet another makeshift OR. He regretted that he hadn't gotten her to open up. Perhaps it had been for the best. He couldn't believe the tremendous gift this girl showed in surgical procedures. Why on earth would she give it up? He was dying to ask her again, but as he looked over at her in the inky darkness, he noticed a sadness on her face and decided not to press. The opportunity for her to reveal her secret to him had passed many hours earlier. As Paul pulled up in front of Naomi's apartment, Drew wondered if he couldn't get one more chance to speak intimately to her. He opened the passenger door and helped her from the cab. Thanks for dinner, she said, and shyly dipped her head, shielding her eyes from his. I ended up having a great time, he said, despite all that happened. True. Oh, he simply couldn't help himself. He had to press just a tiny bit. Did it help you at all, the move from Los Angeles? She gave this serious consideration before replying. Mm, I'm not sure yet. She traced her finger along the rim of the truck door. Drew wanted to kiss her, but after tonight, he knew they'd only be professional colleagues, friendly, professional toward one another, but not lovers. 
This realization bothered him as much as did the realization that she was throwing away her gift as a surgeon in order to blend in with the boring, banal world he'd been living in for all these years after Danielle left him. The truth was he'd lose her. Naomi would carry on for a while, running a small town practice. Then, when she grew too bored and missed her practice too much, she'd pack up her bags and head back to Los Angeles to her high-powered, high-stakes medical practice as an experienced trauma surgeon. Just as Danielle had done. It was good having dinner with you tonight, she said. He was on the verge of telling her she was throwing her life away by abandoning her medical practice. He longed to tell her all these things and yet he was helpless to stop the trajectory that she was on and the fact that he was already hopelessly in love with her. He longed to say all these things to her but he didn't. He didn't say a thing. Okay then, she said, as she turned to walk to her apartment. See you later. Yep, and they were done.